Mm -hmm. Over time, any woodworker is going to collect everything from, you know, an old <laughs> saw like this one here to a, maybe even one of those Fat Max ones that came out from Stanley years ago. Uh, of course, we all started with the, the famous <laughs> coping saw. But there's a saw that we probably all should pretty much have in our arsenal these days. And I've been really reluctant to get something. So I did a lot of research and I went and talked to a couple of the uh, woodworkers and the uh, wood clubs up there in Houston, Texas and discussed the situation and they all, they all had them. They all love them. What is it? Let's find out. So the answer to one lousy extra hand saw doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> in this case, I decided I really like to get a Japanese saw. I've heard so much about these over the last number of years and I keep putting it off and saying, well, maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll get one, I don't know. I don't use these, why would I want that one? But I've seen some situations where a small saw uh, can get me, you know, to just finish a certain cut or something and kept thinking, you know, a little Japanese saw might not be a bad thing to have around. Now, uh, talking to different woodworkers, some of them said, don't buy the little one, you probably will never use it. Don't buy the great big one unless you're really serious about using Japanese saws. And uh, the consensus was get the middle of the road one. Also the price, they run from $10 to $100 or more. And this one specifically, uh, I liked it for a bunch of reasons. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what, why I picked this one. First off, it's about the middle, the middle size, I guess. Let me get the wrapping off here. There we go. Uh, also, uh, like most of these Japanese saws, it has the nice one where it's the coarse teeth on one side and has the fine cut on the other side. So you have, you know, two different uh, blades that you can be using. Of course, with Japanese saws, they cut or tear out the material when you pull back on them uh, either way. So that was a sort of like, you know, it might be a cool thing to have. And also this one here, and it's, uh, I don't know if you can read that, but uh, yeah, made in Japan. So at least we know where it came from. <laughs> if it said made in China, I would have, huh? <laughs> it has a little bolt here that can be unscrewed and you can change this blade if something should happen to it. It's a brand name that has the uh, inscription here, S-U-I-Z-A-N, Suzanne, maybe, or Su Suzanne, uh, I don't know. It would be said in, said in Japanese, so cool. And the handle is a rubberized handle, has a nice grip to it, which I like that over some of the fancy ones. I actually had bamboo handles and I kept thinking, you know, it's, uh, that's not gonna feel good in the hands. So the rubber handle, plus of course the hole at the end so this thing can be hung up somewhere when it's not being used, which is probably quite often. I, you know, it's one of those things, if you're a woodworker, you really should have at least one of these around your shop, even though the use could be limited or you may use it a lot depending on how much you like it i guess but if you're looking for a good cut and a good straight cut they say this is the baby to own so okay and like i said this is the middle of the road so good handle uh changeable blade uh coarse fine tooth and of course good quality and made in japan so that that sort of wraps that up doesn't it? i'm going to provide a link in the description below where you can find these bad boys. If you decide to pick one up, yes, it will help the uh, channel. It, you know, it will help. In the meantime, uh, I guess I'm gonna take a piece of wood and just cut with it, and that way I can, you know, I'll tell you how this thing feels. So here we are, we've got a little piece of wood here. I just made a little notch here where I wanna cut. The uh, elegant thing with this particular saw is the way it works. I'm gonna go with the coarse side first. This is a very small piece of wood, of course, but you can push it like that and you're not really cutting anything. And the handle is straight, which is really very different from what I'm used to. But if you keep this blade up this way, you already know you're gonna, oh yeah, wow. Oops, well that didn't, that sort of tore out a little bit, didn't it? But I cut really easily, really quickly. So I'm gonna pull it ahead again. And let's just cut a little piece with the fine, that was with the coarse tooth. I'm going to cut with the fine tooth. And again, uh, yeah, keeping this sharp and again, keeping the blade up nice and 90 degree, you're going to get a, you're, you're just by nature, you're going to get a nice cut. The other thing you could do, uh, I've seen it where somebody has 
taken some of these teeth back here and used this as a place to, you know, create a mark first to where you're going to cut with the Japanese saw. But, ooh, wow. Yeah, that's going down through pretty quick. Wow, that is really cool. Um, I hate to say it, guys, but I, you know what? That's one of those things. I kind of like it, you know. It does a really quick job. And at the same time, it does a really nice, that's a nice, neat little cut. And that's just by hand, just whacking with no markings or anything to follow. And I've still got a really nice straight cut out of it, too. So that's, in fact, I wonder how straight that is. Where's, where's the cut? I guess this is the cut right here. And uh, can you see that? Yeah, it's, wow. It's, uh, huh. it's, uh, it's a nice cut. And it's, it's, wow, it's reasonably straight. Straight up and down. Wow. Good saw. So after messing around a little bit, um, I like it. And it's going to make a nice complimentary piece because now I can tell people, yes, grr, I even have a Japanese saw. Oh, don't mess with me. Oof. Yeah, it's a weapon. Uh, so it's about $30, this particular one. It's not the small one, it's not the big long one. It's right, right, like I say, middle of the road, but I think it'd be about the best one to probably have around the shop. And if you need to touch something up or you want to finish a little cut that you couldn't get through with the table saw or something, you might have a little piece you want to nip off or whatever. This would probably be the weapon to use. I like it. Now, we're gonna do something else. Yes, we got two tools today. So now we're gonna go over to something else. Alrighty, tool number two. If, uh, well, it's summertime here, so if you're into uh, camping and you have a tent or you have a fly cover over your tent, anything like that, a lot of times you need some grommets in there or replace a grommet, and it happens to all of us. So what I've got today that uh, came in was a gal wanted me to show you this, and we got a good deal on it. It's a grommet tool kit, which includes brass and looks like stainless steel grommets for your canvas or your tent or your leather or whatever you need. I just punched one in here and put it in the rag and it does a pretty good job. It's pretty simple but it also comes with this little, uh, I guess we'll call this the uh, workbench area <laughs> right here and a little hole cutter. So you take a hammer and you punch through your fabric first with your little hole cutter and then you set your grommet up. Now to set the grommet machine up is really easy. Really easy. Uh, you look for the grommet, in this case it has the long neck on it which is like that there. I don't know if you can see that very well. And you put that over your die like this. Then you're gonna put your fabric with your hole cut down and stretch it over this and get it flat. And then you have a little ring from the other kit here. Oops, one ring. <laughs> one, yeah, just one ring. And you put that and you'll face it down this way. It's, it's concave, so the concave open or end of, if you like, goes down over top like this. And then you're gonna crush that with the pliers, which, so the pliers have a really nice kind of leverage and you know, rubberized handles, really nice feel to them. And they crush the two together so that the grommet, you know, permanently uh, seals up like what it did here with this rag. I just sort of did a quick test with one and it came out really nice. And it, you know, I can now hang this rag up somewhere on a nail and if I ever need an emergency uh, <laughs> micro cloth, uh, I'm, I'm good to go. But the, the idea here is that it's it's on sale, so we're gonna give you a nice link to it, and it's a nice grommet kit that a lot of us, uh, even me, you know, with the crazy things I do around here, I can always use a grommet kit. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we're out of here. Hey, over and out. <laughs>